street again Got me head in the game With the red light on I'm just waiting for the change Got me head down low Okay, do you all remember Mark Ryan? I've spoken about him a few times. He is the Minister for Police here in Queensland. Uh, him, along with the commissioner, uh, who I described as the people who broke the system, you know, they made so many terrible mistakes, in my opinion, just my opinion, and uh, a lot of terrible mistakes. They really screwed police over, screwed a lot of good police officers over, uh, broke broke things and then turned around and said, hey, look at this. All these things are going wrong. We don't know how they went wrong. Um, even though they they were the cause of the they were the cause of the whole problem. And then they turned around and said, but here's the solution. Yet again, we have this fella, Mark Ryan, Minister for Police not to be trusted, this fella, not to be trusted at all. This report came out in The Guardian, and it's it's going over here, I'll bring this up here, the Child Protection Reform and Other Legislation Amendment Act. So they've made, uh, well, they're trying to make these through, they've rushed through some amendments. So this headline, all 14, well, lists, this is the list, sorry, all 14 last-minute amendments rushed through by the Queensland government without scrutiny. So it's very typical of any government, really, Liberal or Labor. Uh, but I think this Labor, especially here in Queensland, they they have a penchant for just steamrolling over people's rights, okay, and just trying to rush things through, uh, just trying to, you know, they, they behave like musician, uh, magicians, you know. Look at this, look at this, while their left hand is... Uh, it's it's doing the is doing is where all the action is taking place. Just look over here while we do this, but behind the curtain, we're actually doing all these other things. That's him here, Mark Ryan. So this bill, so originally introduced in October last year, Queensland's Child Protection and Other Legislation Amendment Bill started life as an extremely routine housekeeping law. Uh, the bill updated a range of rules for people convicted of sex sexual offences and modernised the Child Protection Registry Scheme, amongst other changes. Probably its most interesting element was to allow police to enter the home of more convicted offenders without a warrant to inspect their electronic device devices retrospectively, which on the surface is probably not a bad thing, but uh, on the surface, I mean, these things can always go wrong. That's the problem. Uh, it was passed. It was expected to pass with little opposition after sailing through a parliamentary committee process in February. It then sat on the notice paper for months. You know why it sat there for months? Because they had a plan. This was it. That all changed at 3.29 p.m. on Wednesday when Minister for Police Mark Ryan stood up in Parliament to announce 57 pages of amendments to the bill with minutes notice. So obviously they do this so that they can try and make these amendments, get them passed all at the, the last minute, then they're not scrutinised. Uh, so now the bill would change everything from the operation of the North Queensland Mining Lease, which is the, they're talking about the township of Glendon, uh, to the policing of sex workers, as well as requiring the suspension of the state's Human Rights Act. Requiring the suspension of the state's Human Rights Act. As I learnt the hard way, this, the state's Human Rights Act never really mattered anyway. Because if the government, if, if organisations like the Queensland Police wanted to overrule, overlook the Queensland Human Rights Act, they could do it regardless. Uh, anyway, so this is to allow for children to be kept indefinitely in adult watch houses. Who can't see... Who can't think that there's something's going to go wrong if you do, if you keep, if you're allowed to keep children indefinitely in adult watch houses? I, I guarantee you, especially in some of these, uh, some of the indigenous communities, there'll be a police officer out there who says, well, look, we've got this child there. We've got a couple of adults there. Um, but, you know, they're, they're actually related in some way. They've got a, a, they've got a family connection. So we should be all right if we just keep the child uh, in in a cell with one or two of these adults. It'll happen. It will happen. Definitely. And it will go wrong. 
but you know, if you allow people to take the the lazy way out, if you give them opportunity to take the easy way out, things will go wrong. Uh, anyway, going on. By introduce, introducing the changes so late in the process, as I said, the government ensured they wouldn't be scrutinised by parliamentary committees as most bills are. So here's a list of the 14. It's going through the 14 amendments. So I'm not going to talk about all of them, just the, the few. There's uh, one in, in particular. It's just makes my blood boil when he's talking about what he's done to police and making excuses for it. The First Amendment removed the requirement for offenders on the sex crimes registry to report the location of every digital device they own or have access. Doesn't that seem very strange? We we we, we talk about protecting our children, to protecting citizens in general from criminals. And yet someone who is uh registered registered on the sex crime registry. Okay, they're removing the requirement to report the location of every digital device. That's very, it's a very strange thing. If you really want to tr- protect your citizens from from sex offenders, why would you remove this requirement? But it, doesn't this seem like what's happened? It, that just blows my mind. This seems like what this seems reminiscent of what's happening all around the world uh we see governments that seem to make these weird amendments to their le- different legislations or try and pass bills that seem to seem to protect sex offenders strange uh make of that as you will i think it's wrong uh what else here the government acted on long standing inquiry uh inquiry recommendations uh, decriminalizing the offenses of begging and public drunkenness. The offenses have a disproportionate impact on vulnerable groups like Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Queenslanders and homeless people and are perceived as criminalizing people for simply being poor, Minister Ryan said. Uh, those behaviors require a health and social welfare based response rather than a criminal response. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, in a related amendment, the laws limit the ability of police to punish people for public urination. Police will retain the powers to issue an infringement notice to a person for public urination in order to protect business in the CBD and the nightclub district of Fortitude Valley, according to Ryan's speech. Yeah, public urination. It's all good until someone's peeing on your front door, Mark Ryan. Then you want something done about it, I guarantee you. That's anyway. Uh, this is this is the one here I'm talking about when it talks about police, okay, and why I say that Mark Ryan really does have a hatred for police. I think if you're a police officer who can uh, who wants to actually think for yourself and you don't agree with Mark Ryan, well then he has a hatred for you. So the government also moved to overturn uh, a decision by the Queensland Court of Appeal which prevented it from imposing disciplinary sanctions on a number of police officers. The cops had to be reappointed to their sometimes senior positions as a result of a technical error in the way they were referred to the state of state discipline, Ryan has said. Well, that's it's very, uh, it just really breezed, breezed around the, uh, the facts there. I mean, yeah, it, it might have been a technical error, but it was a technicality that the Queensland police, the Queensland government were warned about years before it went to the uh, the Court of Appeal. They were warned about it. Uh, they put forward their own so-called legal experts and said, no, no, you've got nothing to, nothing to fear here. It's all good. And then it went to the Court of Appeal and they lost. So, well, yep, it might be a technical error, it's their own fault. He doesn't think that the law should apply to something that he is a part of, that he believes in. Okay. So what the court of appeal decided this, that they did the wrong thing, that they uh there was this technical error. Why should his opinion is that the court of appeal is not right? So why should he have to abide by it? These police didn't didn't uh didn't go by his rules didn't want to play by his playbook so therefore he will just ride he will just uh trample their rights 
Uh, the next amendment implements a recommendation of the 2021 inquiry into legalizing sex workers in Queenslanders, uh, in Queensland. Uh, there's a few others here. The other big one here, uh, it says, the big one, eliminating a legal loophole that could have overturned the state's youth justice system. The law had previously required that a child detained in a watch house be taken to a youth detention centre as soon as practicable, which would seem... It, it seems pretty fair. You can't just keep a child locked up. Uh, you know, you've got a 12, 13-year-old. You can't just keep them in a watch house indefinitely. So it allows police to transfer a child from one police watch house to another or to a holding cell at a police station. This includes a section allowing police actions to, in quotations, have, effective, have effect despite being incompatible with human rights. Next point, it retroactively exempts police from pro, from potential liability if the use of lockups was illegal. <sighs> Allows the government to declare a police watch house or an adult jail as a youth detention centre to permit jailing a child there. It sunsets on 31 of August 2027 although the government can extend this for an additional 12 months. <sighs> yeah. And then the last one down here corrects the drafting error to allow young people over the age of 18 to be transferred from a youth detention facility to an adult jail. Now, I just want to go back to this one here. Uh, This decision by the Queensland Court of Appeal, which prevented it from imposing disciplinary sanctions on a number of police officers. The, the fact is, Mark Ryan, you lost to the Court of Appeal. You don't like the way it all turned out for you. You were still, a lot of these police officers or police officers that didn't agree, didn't want to go by your uh, your vaccination rules. Okay, you don't like the fact that you lost this court of appeal. Uh, and so yet you still go about trying to attack the very people that you say you're trying to support. The Queensland Police Service has had an extreme amount of trouble with their recruitment process over the last uh, couple of years. Obviously, there were times at the very beginning of this year that they had to cancel recruitment intakes, okay, because they didn't have enough people wanting to be police, wanting to join the Queensland Police Service. So what has Mark Ryan and his commissioner done, even though they, well, they're the cause of the problem because, as I said, they attacked their own officers. So then they decided to go and look overseas and bring in all these police from overseas. That's what they want to do. Even though he will put more police offside, uh, he will continue to make police feel more disenchanted, disengaged, disenfranchised with the Queensland Police Service, continuing not to support police through the hard times, uh, then he will turn around and say, well, it's all good because we're just bringing in police from overseas anyway. We've got all these other recruits coming in from overseas, so don't worry. Even though I'm continuing to cause the problem, I'm also fixing the problem by bringing in more police overseas. Mark Ryan, oh, I... Oh, I've got to be honest, I don't know how, how he is, how is, how is he our minister for police? Honestly, can you, can you honestly tell me how, and how are we still putting up with this Labor government, which seems to be more of a criminal organization at times? Anyway, that's just my opinion, but hey, have a, have a read through it yourself and check out these amendments that they've made the Queensland government. We have some serious issues with the people who are governing this great state of Queensland. Obviously, you have people like, you know, the former Minister for Women who didn't understand what an actual woman is. You know, anyone can declare 
who are women, anyone can declare that they are a woman and we all have to accept that they're a woman. Then we have people like Mark Ryan who decides that, you know, he can, he can uh, attack police. He can treat police. Uh, he can treat good officers like they are flipping idiots uh, and then turn around and say, well, it's all your fault. And I didn't like the result of the court of appeal. So I'll just continue attacking the very police that I'm supposed to be standing up for standing with standing alongside with, uh, but it's all good. Even though I'm causing these problems, even though I'm causing harm, it's all good because I'm bringing in people from overseas. They can be our police officers here in Queensland. <sighs> Mark Ryan, seriously, please don't stop voting for this. This fella, he needs to be kicked out of parliament. Does not deserve to be the minister for police. And these these amendments that they've made at the last minute, we we really need to reconsider the Queensland government and that the the fact that they do, they use these tactics. And I, you know, obviously liberals, they will do the same thing, but we need to uh, have serious, seriously reconsider the way who we vote for. We need a change. We, we can't have, can't have another cycle of this labor government. They need to be taught a lesson, need to be voted out. Mark Ryan, Definitely kick him to the curb. It's my opinion. Thanks for listening to the slippery slope. They just fuel the desire, they will take me higher. I'm on fire because nothing's gonna bring.